Hello everybody, thank you again for tuning in. Today's video is going to be about how I took a Fire-type Pokemon to the Big 1500 in OU. And I know, it's quite controversial, quite controversial, because Fire-types are doo-doo in OU. I mean, notoriously, there are no Fire-types. Look at the OU list, not a single Fire-type. There are many types of Pokemon that aren't in the OU list that just don't make the cut. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I did it. And man, it was an uphill struggle, but it kept me entertained for many weekends. <laughs> there were many weekends of grinding to get that big 15 with a suboptimal Pokemon. And really, the focus of this video isn't so much on the fire type Pokemon, but... Um, lessons learned in team building and kind of building around uh, a Pokemon that you want to use. So my challenge to you would be to pick a Pokemon, just your favorite. Pick your favorite from your childhood, doesn't matter. Pick, pick your favorite Pokemon and try to get to a certain level. See how high you can get and try to build that team around it. Don't give up, you know, it's not hopeless because there is an answer. Uh, I... I'm not going to lie, I got the crap beat out of me one weekend, I thought it was going good, and then I was like, man, this fire type thing is just never going to work out, but I couldn't give it up, I could not give it up, one day I just thought of the perfect team, and I destroyed with it, I got, I just kept going higher and higher, and I made my goal, but um, yeah, so pick your suboptimal Pokemon, and you know, take something out of this video, and try to go to the moon with it, because you gotta believe, man. You gotta believe. Uh, I, I originally wanted to put more time into this video. I almost didn't make this video because I wanted to wait <laughs> when I was ready, like when I had the energy to make it, and then I just accepted that's simply never going to happen. So it's like either after work or never. So here we are. Uh, so I figured I'd just ramble through it, do as many takes as I could and hopefully I got one bearable enough to watch so if you're watching this it's the one all right so let's get into the nitty-gritty of the video the meat and potatoes the team building the big adventure of getting to the 1500 mark with a fire type it took a lot of trial and error I did about four weekends of playing not like all weekend, but you know, the weekend hit and I'd lay around to play Pokemon for a certain number, certain number of hours. And I did that for four weekends in a row and I eventually got it. But man, like, it was a struggle, not gonna lie. And I also, something clicked inside me. I was like, you know, haven't been to 1500 in a minute. Why not? Let's see if I still got it. And I did not like the answer. I did not like the answer to that question. Because <laughs> I didn't. I was like, oh man, what the hell am I doing wrong? It's not working like last time. I thought I was better than this. So, uh, we're going to pretty much go down the evolution of my fire team. And how I landed on the one that has been blowing the competition out of the water. Like you would just never expect. But really, you're going to love it. Okay, so let's go to the first rendition. <clears throat> I picked Charizard, actually. I got tired of using Ninetales, and I have had had some varied success with Ninetales in the past. But um, I, was, I was feeling really cocky about myself, and I said, you know what? I'm going to make Charizard work, because I'm just that crazy of a guy. So I picked Charizard initially. So this is the team. We got Starmie, Snorlax. Oh, this is the wrong Snorlax, by the way. We got to change this. I just did a copy from my original. So this Snorlax had a, you know, I'm just going to pause the video because I don't want you <laughs> to see it. Okay, we're safe now. <clears throat> so yeah, Starmie, Snorlax, Tauros, uh, Executor, Chansey, and Charizard, of course. And, uh, yeah, that was the first Charizard I used. Okay, so we have kind of a typical Starmie, Blizzard Psychic, Thunder Wave, Recover. Typical Snorlax, Reflect, Ice Beam, Rest, Body Slam. Bit of a unique Tauros. Um, I wasn't anticipating Gengar being too much of a problem, and boy was I wrong down the line. But for a little while, for many matches, Gengar wasn't a problem. So I took off... Oh, Earthquake shouldn't be here, actually. This should be Hyper Beam. 
hyper beam there you go anyway yeah that's hyper beam so i didn't have earthquake on this and it actually uh, ended up biting me in the ass uh, down the road because uh, i didn't have a gengar counter between these two so whenever they saw this snorlax they would throw gengar in oh yeah i'm on the crappy page they would throw gengar in and uh i kind of got in a bit of trouble with this like this anti-synchronicity here but I thought I was being I thought I was being cheeky using using that Tauros. This executor, this is my trick executor. Um, if you're gonna use this executor, I only ask that you name it after me. Because <laughs> it doesn't have explosion and has rest instead. Stun Spore Psychic. Uh, doesn't have it's not supposed to have rest twice. I guess it's just bugging. It's supposed to be mega drain. So yeah. Yeah, uh, don't put rest twice because it won't let you. But yeah, so that's um Mega Drain Psychic Rest Stun Spore. That's the trick executor. It doesn't explode. So your your opponent will switch out because they think you're going to explode and they'll switch into something useless. And then you pretty much get a free rest turn. And you get a, you get to reuse your executor before they figure it out. Um, this Chansey, Sing, Seismic Toss, Thunderweight, uh, Soft Boiled. Um, I, didn't, I definitely didn't go with Ice Beam because you get into too many situations where you can't damage the opposing Pokemon with your only attacking move. So I want Seismic Toss instead. And this Charizard Fire Blast slash Sword Stance Hyper Beam. So my first team actually completely sucked. I'm not going to lie. I was having so much trouble with this Charizard. Hyper Beam wasn't doing it for me. Like I couldn't get the damage off that I needed to. Uh, slash doesn't do a whole lot of damage either, but it can punch through Reflect and hurt Chansey. And Fire Blast, man, I mean, Fire Blast is really the most dangerous move to be using against yourself because you're going to risk burning that Chansey or an Alakazam or a Starmie. And if you use that slot on a burn, it's like good game buddy it's over for you because that thing is never gonna die now so fire blast is just a tricky move to use in general okay so <clears throat> that's kind of like the baseline layout of the team this is the base team this is the starter team so i wasn't really having a lot of success with this and then i did what this is wrong yeah, no, this alakazam should be in front so no i was not leading with charizard don't worry yeah, so um, what did I do differently on this one? Where's Zard? Where's Zard at? What the hell? Did I do anything differently? Oh, yeah, it's an Alakazam instead of a Starmie, of course. So take a look at my first team. There's a massive hole here for something to destroy it. I'll give you a minute. What is it? Just, just shout it out, right? It's Zapdos. Zapdos smacks this team it smacks it so i learned really quick like ah oh, dude i'm an amateur so i had to change something so i changed my starter to alakazam maybe thinking that would give me a little a leg to stand on against zapdos but still mm, not really not really that much um i i did nix the water type and i have a zam but really that zam is going to sleep so i was just getting the crap kicked out of me uh, with Charizard, and I was like, okay, well, that's enough. I'm going back to Ninetales, because I, I used to think Ninetales was the best fire type in OU, and uh, I really changed my opinion on that, and we're going to find out who the best is down the road. So I went back to Ninetales, and I did this one. Oop. And I actually had a moderate degree of success with this third one here. Um... And I still, le I was still leading with Alakazam because I was like, okay, well, if I just put Nine Tails to sleep all the time, like if Nine Tails is my sleep eater, then I'm not really using Nine Tails. You get it? So it's like I can't, in good faith, complete the challenge knowing that the only thing I used Nine Tails for was to be a free kill. You know? So it's like I gotta put Tails in the back and actually use it for it to count. And I did okay with it, but um. It was still definitely a struggle, and I would say okay, like I got into the mid-1300s before I started getting uh, beaten down. So, the battles still felt like a big struggle, like it felt like I was struggling to survive, like I was always on the defense, and it wasn't really registering in my brain that um, 
what I was doing was wrong, you know? And we're going to circle back to that part about being wrong uh, in a little while. But, you know, I, I thought I could muscle through, like, if I just kept playing and I got lucky enough, then I could, like, pull it off. But really, it just wasn't happening. And I started getting really, really frustrated. I think it was, like, the second weekend I was playing, I started getting really frustrated. So I was like, all right, you know what? Screw it. Screw you, Ninetales. What's wrong with me? Why can't I beat these people? I'm a good player. You know, what the hell is going on here? So uh, version 4, it looks identical, except Ninetales should be at the front. So I actually just started using nine tails to die, basically, to, to eat the sleep and maybe get lucky later on. And, um, yeah, I still was getting the crap kicked out of me. So I was starting to get really demoralized, and I was like, okay, what the hell am I doing wrong here? Like, I know I'm not this bad. Something is going on here. And I'm going to show you here in a second uh, what was really throwing me off. I got a little too addicted to this. To this right here to this team formula right you go right to the viability page I was playing it to buy the book I built my team to buy the book to be running something as bad as nine tails right so even though I thought I was giving my team the appropriate padding like I thought I was giving nine tails some good padding to survive in the meta I really wasn't. I was just going off of this. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. This has been proven to work. I'll just find some variation of these six that are going to work for me. And it just wasn't effing working. It wasn't working. So I said, all right, I got to do something different here. This isn't working. I think like the third weekend, I went to this team, version five, and I... I committed a mortal sin against all copy and paste sample team OU smog on professional team builders. Mortal sin. I dropped one of the big three. <gasps> oh my god, he didn't. He did not just drop one of the big three. Yes, I dropped one of the big three. I said, I am not playing by your rules anymore. I'm doing things my way, and I actually think Slowbro would work a lot better than Chansey, right? So let's take a look really quick at what was wrong with this team here, okay? We're going to go right to the root of the problem. There she is. You never think Chansey would be the root of the problem, but guess what? Could be. One of your big three could be the root of your problem if you're trying to build around something else. So I was like, hmm. This is really not cool. And let me let me fact check myself really quick. I want to make sure it was indeed Chansey that I dropped. No. Yeah, it was Chansey. Look. Yeah, so I dropped Chansey. And I was really running into a snafu here. So Ninetales, this set, it's kind of gimmicky. It can work sometimes. you got to be careful with the Fire Blast. I mean, it can hit hard against attacking Pokemon like Snorlax and Tauros. But you still really, you know... You gotta be careful, and it doesn't. It's really lacking in stopping power. Like you're pretty much kiting Confuse Ray. You're like reliant on Confuse Ray to proc for you to, you know, get anywhere. I had some. I've had some hilarious wins with Confuse Ray. Like I, I one v one to Starmie and won <laughs> with that. That was pretty funny. Uh, but really, it's it's just too gimmicky to survive in the upper echelons. So. And if that Snorlax was the old one, ignore it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, and sometime, somewhere along the way, I um, put... This is wrong. This should be Hyper Beam. And you know what? That's good enough. Okay, you know what? I don't care anymore. You get it. It's Hyper Beam. Hyper. See? But yeah, so I changed... I uh, took off the Blizzard and the Thunderbolt combo, and I started using Earthquake Thunderbolt instead with Hyper Beam Body Slam. Because uh, Gengar was <laughs> ruining my life. <laughs> I was like, I gotta stop doing this. I need some, some Gengar coverage like yesterday. And I still wanted to keep my Cloister coverage, so I did Earthquake um, Thunderbolt on that Tauros. Anyway, Chansey, why do you suck so bad? Let's, let's talk about why Chansey sucked so bad on this team. This team is... God, we gotta stop looking at that Snorlax. This team is severely lacking in... Um, Attack power. 
I was having a really hard time uh, staying on the offensive with this team. This team was just a little too special, if you if you know what I mean. A little too special. It had too much special attack and not enough uh, raw power attack. Not this one. Oh yeah, no, this one. And you're like, oh, but Keegan, Slowbro is special. But it's like, Slowbro is so special that he pretty much counts as, like, unspecial. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can you can tank up with Slowbro to the point where, like, the special walls die. So that, and it kind of really complements the Nine Tails well. It, it really kind of did amazing things for my team by keeping that Slowbro uh, in that Chansey slot, by dropping Chansey, I, I was able to tank up a lot and really kite the opponent for a longer time and really just do a lot more damage with Slowbro. And one thing I will say about Slowbro is I notice him a lot more in the upper tiers of the ladder. And I think he deserves it. I really do think he deserves it. I think I was sleeping by not using Slowbro because Slowbro is just so amazing if you set them up at the right time. You got to make sure those critical electric strikes are not going to bring you down. You got to make sure that sleeper's not going to bring you down. And you got to make sure you're not in a position for Tauros to uh, take you out. So. But Slowbro is just disgusting. He is disgusting. And I don't know why he gets more, why he doesn't get more love on the rankings page. Because look at this. Look at this rankings page. I mean, where is he? He's not even he's not even B tier, right? He's not even B tier. B C. That's crap. That's crap. It's like you, you're really gonna put him in B C like he's not even B tier when if he gets like two amnesias, he can wipe a whole team. Like he's a meme, dude. Slow bro is a meme. He is he's ridiculous. And he can really just sink teams really, really efficiently. So I had a lot of success with this. I got to like 1465, I think, one weekend. And I thought I had it. I was like, this is the one. This is the one that's going to take me to the league, baby. We go into the league. We go into the league. But no, the, the, uh, the weekend after that, I got destroyed all weekend. All effing weekend, or like all day, yeah, I think so. I got destroyed pretty recently, like all, I played one day, I got destroyed all day. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then I knew. Then I knew I was still doing something wrong. Because, I mean, the facts are right there in your face. I got lucky, right? I had good luck. If, if it was a good team, I would not have been demolished like I got demolished all freaking day. I went from 1465 down to like 1281. It was embarrassing. I think even lower, maybe like 1260. It was embarrassing. I just like, dude, I'm going to bed. I hate this. And uh, I think I was like, dude, I guess I'm just a bad player. I guess I can't play anymore. My channel's a lie. And then I was at the grocery store, and I was just thinking, and I was like, I gotta find a way to take this fire type all the way. And this team occurred to me. The final team. There's an old saying in war. A good offense is the best defense. I realized that I was a hypocrite. I have multiple videos that I put out telling people that they need to think outside of the box, that they spend too much time switching around and they spend too much time trying to keep their Pokemon healthy and keep them alive and keep them healed. They're playing too defensively and I fell victim to that because I thought that was the meta. I cannot believe what a hypocrite I am. Because I wasn't even listening to myself. I wasn't listening to my heart. Because you've got to stay on the attack. You've got to stay on the attack. Because remember, Pokemon at its core is a turn-based strategy game, right? It doesn't matter that you took 147 turns in your epic match. If you're taking 147 turns to play, you're playing too defensively. 
You're playing too defensively. There's something wrong with your team if you're doing that. The only way you can win is to beat the other person, not bore them to death. I mean, sure, in some cases it works. Yeah, you can be a defensive team. But really, you're playing defense. You're protecting, you're running away. You know? There's a hole in your team that is not allowing you to punch through the enemy team. Your team is imperfect. It's incomplete. And I realized that. I was like, oh my god, dude. It's like, it's, I'm, it's not me. It's, there's something wrong with this formula here. And I'm unable to get through the enemy's defenses. Right? So I said, okay, time to do what I do best and think outside the box. And I came up with the team. Dude, you, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. But I'm going to tell you. I have been steamrolling with this team. I have been destroying people left and right. High tier, everything. Left and right. I have been, I have been demolishing people by combining my play style, my fundamental play style with a team that perfectly matches it. And I'm going to show you in a second. But do, I've been I've been annihilating people with this team. It is it has been comedic. So, I mean, you got to believe it. Okay, so we're going to look at the crown jewel here. And we're going to skip actually right to the crown jewel of the team. I actually had a video about this a long time ago in my OU team building guide, right? This Snorlax. And in that OU team building guide, I mention the common move sets, the so-called standard move sets, and then I mentioned the trick move sets, right? And I started using trick move sets on some of my mons, some of my Pokemons. And this was one of them. Amnesia Lax, right? So this guy has been like blowing big fat holes in the enemy team every day, all day. Amnesia, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Self-Destruct. No rest on this because we ain't trying to rest, right? We are trying to go, go, go. We are trying to punch, 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 freaking launch the missiles. You know, we're not trying to sleep. We're not trying to heal. We are trying to get as much coverage as we can and just blow through them. And the best thing about this Snorlax is people don't freaking expect it. I can count on... I don't have enough limbs. I don't have enough fingers or toes to count how many times people have left a water-type Pokemon in in the Snorlax's face because they don't expect it to have Thunderbolt. Because you see an Amnesia Lax, you, what do you think? It has Body Slam and Rest, right? It has Body Slam and something else. It's got Body Slam. No. No Body Slam. Thunderbolt. I have a graveyard of Starmies at my feet because of this guy right here. Um, Blizzard and Self-Destruct, they think it's going to rest because it's like, oh, well, he tanked up. He wants to keep it. He wants to keep that Snorlax. He's going to rest right now. Nope. You switch in something new predicting my rest, I explode and kill that thing too. Oh my god, guys. I cannot make this up. This thing is a monster. It is the carry. It has been destroying everything in my path. So, yes, I would highly recommend using this Snorlax because he is the trickiest. People do not expect it. And if enough people start using it, then he'll become the Metalax. I guarantee it. And I really much prefer it over the Reflect Ice Beam Lax. Uh, just because Reflect Ice Beam Lax is pretty much only good for fighting another a clone of itself. That's what it's made for. It's fighting a clone of itself in, like, Tauros and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's a good Lax. But this one, at the higher levels, so much better. So much better, especially that Thunderbolt, right? Okay, so the rest of the team. Uh, Alakazam lead, really great lead. Um, you can, I mean, he's pretty much the best at harassing the opponent in the early game. Especially against Sing Chansey, right? And doesn't, you get a free Thunder Wave on anything at the beginning except Jolteon. Um, and if, the, if it's another Alakazam, uh, what I do is I just go right to Executor and get that free sleep powder on something, right? And I, I changed my executor. I, I had the trick executor before, and I think I play a lot of people with it, and I decided to go back to the normal executor, and I've been, like, <laughs> making gravestones with this one, too. <laughs> I mean, I told you, baby, we're not trying to rest. I'm, I'm, I'm a really good timer of the explosion. Like, I, I know when people think explosion's coming, and I just... 
I'm like, nope, we're not doing that. We're, <laughs> we're going to kill you somehow, and it usually works. So I've been a monster with the uh, exploding moves so far because I'm just so good at predicting the, the other players. Anyway, back to Alakazam. Um, pound for pound, best opener in the meta, I think. And if you're if you're a savvy player, usually what happens a lot in a lot of my matches is the opponent will throw in a chancy and they'll try to get off that sing. But if you if you hit the thunder wave and you start getting special drops, like that chancy starts getting in danger, and you can kind of like throw out a thunder wave whenever you want, you know. And most of the time, I'm I'm a really good predictor when the person wants to pull that chancy out when it's been dropped too much, and I'll do thunder wave and like oftentimes thunder wave a Starmie along with it, or like thunder wave another Pokemon because it wants to refresh the chancy. So you know, just really really great harassment opener. There's really no hurry to take Alakazam out early unless you see an opportunity to get you know something better in. Um, another thing I did, another great move that I've been doing during my opening moves is if the opponent throws out a Starmie, um, I will Thunder Wave it, right? And hope it doesn't Thunder Wave me back because I don't know, I, most people think they can't you know win that exchange. So I've had a, a pretty moderate degree of success hitting that Thunder Wave, and sometimes the Starmie won't even move or it won't Thunder Wave you. So the Starmie will be paralyzed, but Alakazam won't, which is a great opportunity for me to switch into the Snorlax and do the Amnesia Thunderbolt. And you can kill Starmie in two hits with a boosted Thunderbolt, a one times boosted Thunderbolt. You can kill Starmie in two hits. And really, they don't expect you to have this set, so they'll just they'll fucking keep it in. They'll just keep the fucking Starmie in. <laughs> <laughs> so you throw this in on a paralyzed star, and you get the free boost, and you get the free thunderbolt, and then your opponent's in just in a just in a freaking jam. After you like take them by surprise like that, it's it's hilarious. All right, Tauros. Um, we already talked about this one. I put earthquake, thunderbolt, hyper hyper beam back on it, and this really helps with cloister because really they're gonna throw in a cloister thinking they're cheeky like oh he has blizzard. Nope, idiot. Uh, Executor, we talked about that. This is this is the opposite of my Executor. This is just the regular one. So, trying to catch people off guard with that. But, you know, you watch the video now. I made it to 15. I'm probably going to take a little break from doing that again. <laughs> um, Charizard, here he is. I went from Nine Tails back to Zard. Nine Tails back to Zard. And the reason is because look at this set. There's not a fire move in sight, and it has been doing me wonders. It has been doing me wonders just having this all-out attacking Charizard. You get Gengar coverage, you get you get Jolteon coverage, you get Earthquake, and really you could do like you could pre-sword stance into the switch, Earthquake, then Hyper Beam, and oftentimes for a kill before you go down. I mean, I've just been having a lot of success with Charizard's 298 speed, his sword stance, and his all-out attacking moves. Also, you keep Slash there too because you might run into a Reflect Chansey or Reflect something. You want to slash through that Reflect. Or maybe you just want to finish something off and get some you know easy, decent damage right off the bat. That's how you get that Slash. And uh, let me show you how this happened to me. Is I was um, you know on this, I was on the calculator, and someone a long time had a really good idea. And I was like, oh... Oops, we're just going to close that. Charizard OU Swords Dance. Look at the default move set on this. This is it. Someone had the idea, and I was like, thanks for the great idea, person who put this on here. Because, dude, it works. That's all I can say. All right, so pretty much that was a team-building journey, and we're going to look at my 1500 match. We're going to look at the match where I made it. I became the champion, or rather... The master, I don't know, whatever. I made it to the big 15, and really, man, this match is one in a million. I mean, one of a million, I should say. Not one in a million. It wasn't rare for this to happen. One of a million of this match. I mean, I just, dude, I destroyed this person, and he's not special. He's not special. It happened to so many people. Um, I can't overstate my success. I would say that... Like, I doubled, maybe tripled my win ratio. Um, not doubled, I'd say I doubled it. Doubled my win ratio with this team. I just steamrolled right to the top. Right to the top. It was unbelievable. So let's go ahead and watch. All right, double Alakazam. Had a bit of a blooper there. Might cut that part. But, you know, one cut out of the whole video, not so bad. I'm 30 minutes in. May as well. 
All right, double Alakazam opener. I'm gonna go right to my executor, right? Want to get that free sleep while I can. Luckily, he switches into his Chansey, and that is a chance I am willing to take rolling that sleep powder. So let's see what happens. And he keeps it in. Great, great, great for me. Thanks, thanks for that. He doesn't go back to Alakazam to eat the sleep. He wants to risk it, and it works out great. And he keeps it in, and what am I going to do? He sleeps. What did I do there? Did I miss a stun spore? Is that what happened? Oh no, that he, sorry, he didn't he didn't stay in for a sleep turn. Okay. So he goes right to Starmie. Let's see what happens. I think what am I do? Get that special drop. Blizzard doesn't hurt me too much, luckily. Okay, I paralyze the Starmie with the Executor. I want the paralysis. Then I go right to Snorlax. We talked about this. We talked about this. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. He, he paralyzes the Snorlax. That stinks. Luckily, this Rhydon doesn't use Earthquake. Um, I just go straight for the Blizzard because I know it does half health to that Rhydon. Yeah. So then he's like, oh, he has Blizzard. I'm going to go back to Starmie. But we know what's coming, boys. We know what's coming. Thank you for putting that Starmie back in. Yep, there's the Amnesia. The Starmie's toast. Oh my god, look at that. Never saw it coming. Never saw it coming. Okay, I think I'm gonna get... I get paralyzed here. I just say, nope, he misses that, thank god, so I can get that off. Will that have killed me? Will that have killed me? I don't know. I might need to calc that. Could have gone really differently. But uh, honestly, man, I, I, I think I finished pretty strong here, and I have been destroying a lot of people with this team, so... Get that massive damage off of Snorlax. Gonna go back to Executor. He's gonna go Chansey, and I think I'm just gonna muscle through it. Am I right? No! Yes! Classic move. This is a move I use a lot in random battles, as I want to... They want to keep their sleeper in, and they want to be cheeky, like, You can't kill me. That's fine. I'm gonna tank something else up. And now I'm gonna start tanking up the Charizard, right? Get that Swords Dance. I got an Earthquake on it. This right on is going down. Goodbye. I am set and ready to go. He's going to put Alakazam in, not knowing. He doesn't know that I can one-shot his Alakazam with this because no one uses Charizard. He feels safe. He's like, oh, dude, you're not going to one-shot my Zam? Or that, or he was, like, freaking out, and he just wanted to sack the Zam to get the, the paralysis. I don't know what he was thinking here, but I'm betting that he didn't know he was about to die. So thanks. Oh, and that was a risky move, too. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, I thought Rhydon was still alive. And I'm just going to get some fat damage on this Tauros. I know I'm going to die. I don't care. I just want the fat damage. Right? Go ahead. Go ahead and kill me. You win. Yep, 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 yep. That's fine. Going to put Zam back in for a quick kill on the Tauros. He's going to put Chansey in. Because what else can he do? Tauros in for the quick win. Wrapped it up in 23 turns. This was my 1500 match. 23 turns. Look at this quick win right here. My god. He throws the Chansey in. I don't know why you would do that. Tauros is in. Doesn't matter if Chansey woke up. Hyper Beam on this. Hyper Beam on this. If he doesn't crit my Tauros with his own Hyper Beam, which are odds I'll take. Hyper Beam on this. I mean, checkmate. Checkmate. And pretty much that's what ends up happening is... I just checkmate him, and this battle here is not unique. I mean, I have been fast attacking teams with this team like all day. I got I got to fifteen hundred in like two days with this team. It was absurd. So, if you take anything out of this video, is that I would say it is possible to use a crappy Pokemon to pad it properly with the proper team. And that team doesn't necessarily have to be a big three formula. It just do a lot of thinking and try to find things that work with each other. And the most important thing I would say is, is build that team with attacking in mind, right? Don't focus so much on healing 
because the game will go on, and as long as you're ahead by just one or two turns, you're going to win, like in random battles. It's not a focus on healing in random battles. It's a focus on structuring your plays. So build your movesets with that in mind, of structuring your plays, countering common teams, common setups, countering common counters. You know, just really do the thinking and, and focus on punching through. Focus on attacking. You know, you, you don't like in Philly, don't get too attached to your Pokemon. They're supposed to die. You know, it's like chess. <laughs> You're supposed to sacrifice your pieces to win. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's been really fun getting that fire type all the way up here, and I finally did it. So, you know.